Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday afternoon chat. Well, I just made it back from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona had a little rain while I was out there, some flash flood warnings and, and some 100 degree days. Kind of like what we have here in Oklahoma going on today. It's not 100 degree days, but we do have some flash flood warnings on. And believe it or not, they are around my part of the state. That's right. Chris and I are uh, driving back. I flew into Tulsa and uh, picked Chris up and we're headed home. Going to be back to Holly Hill, as we say. That's Twin Eagle Ranch. Back to Holly Hill before dark. That's a long story. I'll tell you the story about Holly Hill someday. It's a great one. But um, it looks like we have rain in front of us and the road is a little wet. It's sprinkling a little bit where we are. So we may be driving into rain, which would be exciting. I don't like to drive in the rain, but it'd be exciting to drive in the rain right now. Driving into rain, um, in front of us and perhaps raining at Twin Eagle Ranch. That would be fantastic. Sherry's called me in a couple of Walmart orders, so we're gonna go by Walmart, pick up some groceries for the week. We will be at the ranch all week. Uh, I uh, travel this coming weekend on Friday over to Morristown, Pennsylvania, be flying to Knoxville, be at the Bigfoot Festival. That's right, the Bigfoot and Paranormal Festival, Morristown, Tennessee. If you are anywhere, that's this coming Saturday and Sunday. It's finally here. I've been looking forward to this event for so long. Uh, my buddy Tim Girardi, with Mount, uh, who's a mountain man from Duck Dynasty, will be there. Uh, another friend of mine, the Turtle Man, will be there. And there's a lot of other people, too. Uh, the other folks, uh, I assume, are involved in uh, the Bigfoot and Paranormal, probably social media as well as, uh, as, well as television, I would assume. But... Uh, uh, it's gonna just be, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's over there at Lake Cherokee, which is one of the very best smallmouth lakes uh, in the nation. If you are anywhere around within a few hundred miles of uh, Morristown, Tennessee, what a great thing to way to spend a weekend is come down to the Bigfoot Festival. I have never been to a Bigfoot Festival, which was one of the reasons I'm excited about it. Uh, but I believe it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of people there that know a lot about chasing Bigfoot and chasing Ghostbusters and things like this. So I think it's gonna be a, a lot of fun. Tim Girardi is a great, great friend. Uh, Turtle Man, another good one, I guarantee you. He's a good one. He's exciting, a lot of fun to be around. So we're looking forward to that this coming weekend. Chris and I will be at the ranch all this week. Leading up to that, we were at the ranch all last week until Thursday where I flew out to Phoenix and I was out to Mid-State show. I uh, saw a lot of uh, friends out there at that show and uh, we were out there working with Shell Rotella and uh, Penzoil, working with Shell Rotella and Penzoil. You know, Shell has a lot of brands. Uh, we started with Shell promoting a Quaker State brand, which is a, a, uh, a uh, uh, very good, very good product, uh, exceptionally good product. And they moved us over to, to promote Shell Rotella. And a lot of people, I get asked occasionally, it kind of blows my mind, but I guess I get asked occasionally, what exactly is Rotella? Well, Rotella, if you've ever owned a diesel engine, you know what Rotella is. Rotella is diesel oil. And uh, it's what most of the big 18-wheelers run. It's what most of the farmers run. And what comes comes in your John Deere tractors when you buy John Deere tractors, as well as some, some of the other brands of tractors. That's got Shell Rotella in there. It has got... <clears throat> I think uh, somewhere around 70% of the marketplace of all the diesel oil, either here in the United States or in the world, I'm not sure which, uh, about 70% of all the diesel oil used is Shell Rotella. So uh, so that's, uh, uh, it's a really, really good product. Of course, uh, Shell also owns Jiffy Lube, uh, where they change your oil, and obviously they change your oil with Pennzoil, and, uh, and Pennzoil, with all the great Pennzoil products. And uh, where they have a new thing that I probably shouldn't be saying because it's probably not announced yet, but we were talking, talking to some of the Mid-State members about it. Um, Pennzoil will be coming out with uh, a new uh, sports oil, uh, outdoor sports oil, power sports oil, uh, probably December or January of this year, probably be out uh, right about there, uh, no later than sometime early next year, but probably be out by December. And uh, in that Power Sports uh, Pins oil, we will have uh, we will have oil for uh, side by sides, four wheelers. We will have oil for uh, snowmobiles, uh, jet skis, things like this. Uh, we will have four stroke outboard oil. Of course, they will also you know have Pins oil Marine, which is two stroke oil. But Mercury Motors, of course, have, has not built anything but four stroke engines for the last, golly, I don't know, three or four years. It seems like I, I've been to keep track, but. Uh, even the big giant Mercury motors that they're building right now are all four stroke engines and they perform incredibly well and uh, the, the Penn's oil is uh, going to have an oil, oil for those four strokes as well as the two cycle engines. So the new uh, uh, 
sports, uh, Power Sports Oil will be out uh, later this year, early next year. And we'll probably be working with Shell uh, and Pins Oil in some of the marketing uh, deals behind that, letting you know what all's available there. And so that's going to be exciting. That's an exciting thing to, to think about. Uh, we've been with Shell now for a lot of years. I don't know how many years, but uh, several. Uh, I guess eight or ten years, something like that. I don't know. But they've been an awfully good company to work with, and I've got lots and lots of great friends over there. And, and they have a lot of great customers around the country. I work with a lot of their, their customers and just really good people. Uh, you know, a, a lot of them are car people, and that's all. But a lot of them are outdoors, but a lot of them are hunting and fishing guys, like my buddies over at O'Reilly's. You know, they, they, they have several of those love to fish. Uh, when you think of the outdoors, uh, I, th I think two of the last three uh, Shell American in the oil part of it, uh, presidents that they've had at Shell, two of the last three have been fishermen, and including the new president that they have down there right now. So that's a that's a really, really good deal when you have uh, fishermen that are is running some of these big companies because, you know, not only are they running that company and trying to do uh, a great job for the shareholders and a great job for the customers and everything, but they are really concerned about keeping the environment good, keeping clean water, clean air. And so they're really, everything they're involved in, they're, they're, they're wanting to make it better for the outdoors because that's what they love, that's what they know. So to me, it's always great when you see uh, an outdoorsman that's in a, a real high position, like a CEO or a president of a company. Or, you know, I was just talking to a, a game ranger, a friend back there a minute ago at Brahms over there in Seminole, Oklahoma. and. Uh, and he pulled up beside me and was talking about uh, a fundraiser I had. He said, you have a fundraiser the other day down in, uh, or a meeting or get together down in, uh, down down in Southern Oklahoma somewhere. And I said, well, yeah, I did. It was Mark Wayne Mullins. And I told him that, you know, how, how good it was that we have congressmen, which is what Mark Wayne is right now. And he's running for the U.S. Senate, probably will be a United States Senator. We'll know pretty soon, but uh, we'll probably be a United States Senator. It's just so good to have people that love to fit and fish and hunt in those positions as, uh, as senators and congressmen and governors and, and even working locally in your local politics, the local, the local state uh, senators and congressmen and judges and on and on and on, county commissioners, it doesn't really matter. It's just when you've got those guys in there that are in those positions that are outdoorsmen, they are the people that have the ability and the power to make a lot of changes that a lot of us out here can only talk about and complain about and try to bring it to somebody's attention. But uh, when uh, when we have those kind of people in office, you know, you, you somebody let them know what needs to be done in the outdoors. And if it's something that'll help the outdoors, they'll, they'll do it because they love the outdoors. And we have so, so many uh, governors and congressmen and senators that don't really care anything about the outdoors. and. Uh, you know, and that's why it's, it's so important to, to pay attention to who you vote for this year and, and, and try to put people in office that are, agree with, they need to agree with the other things you believe in too, but if they're outdoorsmen, they're, they probably do. They're probably pretty good people. So that, that's really an exciting deal. Um, Chris had a, a great time at the ranch last week, and I'm looking forward so forward to having her down here. She's staying at the ranch with me all of the time now, and the great thing is that uh, we're, we're letting the babies out about every evening uh, and uh, I'm sure they miss me being gone the last two or three days or four days out working on the road uh, and not uh, not being able to let out an evening run. I doubt Apache, I don't know, he might be letting them out. I don't know. I told him to, but he gets a little nervous about whether he can get them back in. He doesn't want to let them get out because if they were out in a while, they're probably still too young to make it on their own. And uh, if they get roaming away from the house and they get lost out there, uh, something could uh, something could catch them and kill them and eat them, and, and we sure don't want that happening to those babies. But uh, Chris has been going out there in the evenings and uh, playing with those. They all love her. Uh, you know, little Whitey, of course, has known her since he was born. Uh, <coughs> And uh, she, she spent, he's, the little Whitey spent time in the house for a week or two with Jordan, a week or two with Sherry, and was around Chris a lot. So he, the little Whitey doesn't think anything at all about that wheelchair. It doesn't bother him a bit. And it's actually uh, Lucille and, and Wildshire have got used to it also. So uh, they, they've been, they like to love on Chris out there. And she's been feeding them apples and carrots and feeding them milk. And so that's, that's been a, uh, that's been a really, uh, really good deal for her to get to do. And she'll be doing it this week out there as well. The babies are growing, growing, growing amazingly. The ones in the pens are just, it's just so big. It's just amazing. And, uh, and little Lucille is going to be a tiny little deer like Lucy was. And I, maybe that's why I love her so much. I don't know. But, uh, and she's becoming my baby. She just follows me around everywhere. And, 
Um, I can't wait until it's big enough where she can run, run free and be in the yard all the time. And maybe you just never can tell, you know, she might even end up going out in the boat with me. She probably for sure uh, we'll be getting up on the porch and eating, you know, eating on the porch and uh, little Whitey goes on the porch already Of course, like I said, he was spent the first three or four weeks of his life living in the house living inside So he won't have any trouble at all just walking in the house, but but that's really exciting the deer antlers I don't know if they're uh, if they're peaked out or not some of them might be some of them might still be going I tell you the one that seems like it's still going is Prince Charming, my goodness, Prince Charming, something. So we'll be looking at those a little bit later this week and and uh, seeing how much they've changed throughout the week. It won't be too awful much longer until they start uh, scraping the velvet off their horns. They'll have some hard horns, and that's going to be exciting. It's always exciting to watch as the changes of all of this happens, and and uh, I just uh, just quite a deal to see uh, them send in to see them shed the horns and watch them every day is a exciting day to watch and see if they shed the horns. Of course, for all the uh, bucks that hang around the house and around close by, you know, we get, do a lot of shed hunting. That's the exciting thing to do also. And and so it's just kind of a process that seems like it never ends. I don't know. It just seems like it never ends. Uh, and I, I, I kind of get to feeling bad at times. I feel like I'm just kind of showing the same things over and over. But uh, but it, it is different. It's kind of like going fishing. It, even though it's kind of the same thing every time you go fishing, every fishing trip is unique and it's a little bit different. And I think that's what watching those deer grow and watching the deer brotherhood around the yard and the turkeys and the elk occasionally and all the exciting things that happens. And uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I've been wanting to, and I've been starting to do a little research. I don't know anything about it, but I've been wanting to get a few beehives. I imagine some of you uh, are beekeepers and, and have beehives and, and uh, we've got all those pecan trees. I think it might help our pecans to have bees on the ranch. And uh, besides, I just think it's fascinating. And uh, you know, you put that suit on where they can't sting in. And uh, I'm thinking about buying a couple, two or three beehives. I'm not gonna start out real big, obviously, cause I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, I got a friend of mine, Josh, out in Denver, Colorado, that's got into bees. And he said, it's just fascinating. And, and uh, but I've been thinking about that for the last two or three years. So I might, uh, I might look into that. I don't know if you do it this time of the year or not. Probably not, probably springtime is the time. But, uh, but I might uh, get us some beehives. We can have those to, uh, to, to, to uh, play with and have some fun with too. And, and, and besides that, I love honey. I love honey. Uh, sometimes I eat a little biscuit with my honey, but, uh, but I ha usually have more honey than I do biscuit on there. I love that honey. And, uh, and, and one of the things about honey that's local honey they say that it's better for you health-wise, and, and honey is very healthy anyway because it, the Bible even tells you that how healthy honey is, and honey is really, really good for you. But uh, but if you eat local honey, it's supposed to help you with allergies and, and having colds and help your immune system and, and all of that. So it, it's a pretty pr pretty good from, from that standpoint. Speaking of your immune system, I know a lot of you have uh, have uh, tried our. Turbo Power Plus uh, special offer that they have where they're gonna give you a week supply and you pay the $4.95 for shipping and handling. If you have not tried that, get in there and try it. I've had several people that have, have got it and they, they've, uh, they said it's helped their, their energy a lot and they feel better and it's, it's just it's vitamins and minerals, 70 some odd vitamins and minerals in there. It's just amazing, or 140 or something, I don't know. It's just amazing and uh, because it's not in pill form, it gets into your body a lot quicker, it's liquid. And it's uh, really about half the price of what the uh, the popular brands are out there that, that uh, give you all the stuff you need, new, new nutrients and vitamins and minerals and stuff from fruits and vegetables. It gives you, it's about half the price of that. And uh, and you just take a, a swallow of it every day, you know, about a camp full every day. And and, uh, and it'll, it, yeah, it's sustained energy. It's not a quick burst of energy and then a, a, a rundown or something. It's sustained energy, it lasts all along, but it helps your immune system also. So, uh, and if we ever need help in our immune system, we need it now with all the viruses running around. And it's bad enough, just the flu and cold and all that. Now we got monkey pox and China virus and coronavirus. And, you know, I don't know if that's a country virus or a beer virus, we you know, but, and then they end up calling it COVID. But, uh, so uh, I guess they just pick out whatever name that sounds better to them, I don't know. But there's gonna be more viruses coming around. So we need to make sure we have strong immune systems. So. Uh, you know, you can go to TurboPower.com uh, uh, turbo or we got a, a link up on that video. You look at that video and it goes right to it and uh, you can get those uh, seven, a week supply, seven one ounce uh, little containers of it. 
for free. They'll give it to you and they charge you $4.95 uh, postage and handling to send it to you to take care of that. But uh, try it for a week and see if it helps you. If it doesn't help you, you know, don't worry about it. And if it does, well then that'd be a good supplement for you to be taking uh, for more energy and to get all the vitamins, minerals, you need, and strengthen your immune system. We, uh, we got the cold season coming on here pretty soon and we need to get our immune system good and strong because of that. So uh, anyway, uh, you can check that out. If you can you enter that uh, promo code FISH1, I think it is, uh, to make to get that deal, to get that special deal. But uh, anyway, we got, we're looking for another good week this week. We'll be at the ranch all this week uh, up until the end of the week when we go to the Paranormal Fe Festival. Chris is gonna stay there all week. Uh, we've got a lady that will be staying with her while I'm gone those couple of days. Uh, to go to the uh, Bigfoot and Paranormal Fe Festival in Tennessee. And I'm telling y'all, if y'all don't have anything super, super important to do next weekend, go over there to Morristown, Tennessee. That's gonna be something I believe. I mean, I'm excited about it. I don't really know what to expect, but, uh, but you know, when you start to have a whole festival and you're talking about Bigfoot and, and Paranormal Ghosts and Ghostbusters, it's gotta be fun. It's gotta be fun. Anytime you're around Mountain Man and Turtle Man, it's, that's going to be a lot of fun too. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll be there Saturday only. I get in there Friday night and I'll be there Saturday only and fly back home Saturday night so I could take Chris to church next Sunday. She went to church this morning at, uh, at uh, Keys Baptist Church and, uh, and she took Beamer. Beamer went to church this morning. So Beamer's full of the gospel too right now, I guess. And, uh, but, uh, so we, we've had a, we've had a great Sunday. We're not very far from home right now. It's sprinkling's all it's doing now, but it looks like it's raining quite a bit in this little area we are, but hopefully when we get home, it's still raining. It was supposed to rain. You know, I looked at the, been looking at the weather every, about once every 30 minutes, seems like the last two or three days. And, and, uh, it looked like that it was, uh, supposed to taper off tonight, but maybe rain until two or three o'clock in the morning. So we'll see when we get to the ranch, how much rain we have in the gauge, but, uh, Apache uh, earlier today had sent me a picture and he had one inch in his rain gauge at his house. His house is a, uh, it's still on the ranch, but it's up close to the front gate, a couple of miles. He's up there where he can kind of guard the ranch and uh, check all the cameras and everything, keep an eye on things. But uh, he's a couple of miles away from my ranch house and two miles can make a big difference in the rain sometime. But hope, well, at least we did get some. I mean, I, they were talking about perhaps the three to six inches and Unless something big happens tonight, it sure looks like that's not going to happen. But, but you never know. We're just tickled to get this first rain we've had since June third. So that's been whatever that is, ten or eleven weeks, maybe I guess, or uh, probably yeah, probably closer to eleven weeks than ten. But uh, but we did get a little rain down there, at least an inch, I know. And I'm hoping that by the time we get home, that my rain gauge has got even more than that in it because that was this afternoon when I talked to him. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube, subscribe to that. We now have a Rumble channel. You can go over there and subscribe to uh, Catch a Better Life and Jimmy Houston Outdoors on Rumble. Uh, but uh, if you're not subscribed to Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube, so go in there and subscribe to it. Make sure you subscribe to the Catch a Better Life channel on YouTube as well, where we read those daily devotionals and post those up there and every morning at five o'clock. We do that uh, every single day of the year. It's got a, a fishing tip, a scripture, and a devotional built around fishing for every single day. So, guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one this week. And remember, I sure do love you.